It's too tempting to want results right now. I want to change somebody's mind while I'm talking to them, while I'm face to face with it. It's human nature to want that, to want instant gratification and to win an argument. And anger and frustration can catalyze that. But how many of you play chess? I'm guessing a lot of you are dweebs. You play chess. I play chess. How often do you sacrifice a piece for the greater goal, right? You can have your queen at the end of the game when your opponent checkmates you, but you've lost, okay? You have lost the game. It doesn't help. Another analogy, I love this one too. A pedestrian has the right of way while crossing a street. And certainly if you walk off a sidewalk when a car is coming, you're technically in the right. Uh, you're also roadkill, all right? When you're dealing with someone for, who disagrees with you on some matter, what is your goal? What is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? Insulting at them, uh, excuse me, just insulting them, yelling at them, calling them brain damaged or morons or baby rapers may make you feel good. That's been used, by the way. Um, it may make you feel good. It may help you vent. It may help you release frustration. It may rally the troops. It may even foment people to help you and to take action. And let's be honest, it may allow you to feel smug and superior, at least in that moment. But is your goal to score a cheap point or is your goal to win the damn game? It's not terribly controversial. Thank you. It's, it's not terribly controversial to say that when somebody is being attacked and insulted, they tend to get defensive, right? They're not in the best position to be either rational or self-introspective. It's going to be very difficult to change their mind when, when you're doing that. Now, I know for sure that when my wife catches me doing something stupid, which is all the time, my brain reacts. It knee jerks, right? I try to come up with an excuse. And, and you know... I have to take a deep breath before responding because my, my immediate response is to downplay my stupidity. And, and, and really, in reality, that only compounds it. It only makes it worse. Happily for me, 20 years of being an active skeptic and, and 15 years of, of concurrent marriage have really taught me pretty well in that regard not to do that. It's still my instinct, and I try not to do it. And, you know, I'll admit I'm, st I'm still learning how to do this at, at, at my tender age. Uh, it takes a lifetime to learn how not to do that. The thing is not everyone has learned that. It's no surprise, I think you will agree, that in the skeptic movement we have our share of people who are a bit short in the politeness department. And I am seeing this being actively discussed on the blogs right now, and I'm very glad to see this discussion. You can go to any number of blogs. Even yesterday I, w I saw a new blog post about someone concerned about, about the demeanor of, of skeptics. skeptics. And I, I've been considering writing about this topic for a long time and talking about it at TAM for quite some time. And that's because I've been watching the discourse between skeptics and between skeptics and believers degenerate into childish behavior that is frankly appalling. It's appalling. Taking the low road doesn't help. It doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't make you look good. And it doesn't change anyone's minds. What is the goal of what you're trying to do? And don't confuse taking the high road with being weak and being passionless. It's quite the opposite. I've struggled with this myself, and I found it takes substantial strength and magnifies my passion. If anyone wants to argue my strength and my passion, bring it, okay? I'm ready for you. In times of war, we need warriors. But this isn't a war. You might try to, you might try to say it is, but it's not a war. We aren't trying to kill an enemy. We're trying to persuade other humans. And in times like that, we don't need warriors. What we need are diplomats. So after all this, thank you. So after all this, I think I can sum up my points like this. First, always ask yourself what your goal is. When I was a kid, there was a commercial about going on diets, a sign you could put on your refrigerator that says, is this trip necessary, right? Is this argument necessary? What is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? Before you blog, before you leave a comment, before you engage a pseudoscientist, before you raise your hand, before you send that email, ask yourself, is this going to help? 
Is this going to allow me to achieve my goal? And you also need to ask yourself, will this impede me from achieving that goal? Is this just to make me feel better, or am I trying to change the world? And second, and not to put too fine a point on it, don't be a dick. <laughs> now, I'm, um, I'm, I'm not the first person to say this. Uh, Will Wheaton uses it as his motto on his blog. I think that's, that may be even where I first heard it spoken so succinctly. I know there are a series of videos coming out called Don't Be a Dick. They're wonderful. Uh, you can find them on, I know Rebecca's been, been posting them on Skeptic. Um, I actually wrote this before I saw the first one, so I'm not stealing from them. Uh, you think of it as uh, brilliant minds coming to a similar convergent evolution. Um, but seriously, okay, don't. Don't be a dick. All being a dick does is score cheap points. It does not win the hearts and minds of people everywhere. And honestly, winning those hearts and minds, that's our goal. And I asked you two questions at the beginning when I stood up here in the first place. And the first one was, if you used to believe in something. And the second one is if you lost that belief because someone was a dick to you. My goal, my personal goal, is to have everyone in the world raise their hand when they're asked that first question. And the other part of that goal is to never even have to ask the second one. Thank you. Um, we need to be more inclusive. It's just that simple. Um, excluding people is not a good idea. Excluding people is a worse idea when they outnumber you 10,000 to one, okay? <laughs> When the rampaging horde is, is running down the hill and you're standing there with your scabbard, uh, it's, it's not, you know, yelling at them and calling them idiots is not going to slow them down at all. We need to be more inclusive. I, you know, I'm going to take one extra minute. I wasn't sure if I'd have time to talk about this, but I feel I must. Um, one of the things I love to do is, is give public lectures, and I, I've been giving bad astronomy lectures to, to various places. And recently I've been invited to governor schools where they take several hundred uh, of the best and brightest high school kids and they, they house them and feed them for the summer for a few weeks. And it, it's, it's tremendous. These are go-getter kids. They have to apply to get this. They're not necessarily the smartest kids, not necessarily, although they are in the, in the upper echelon, but they're go-getters. They want to do this. They, they want to learn. They're eager for it. And so I go there and show them how to stand an egg on end on the first day of spring and that sort of thing. Um, and I've done it for three years in Arkansas, which you think would be a stronghold for a fundamentalist religion, but I've actually never had a problem there. This week, and I mean the day before TAM started, on Wednesday, I was in West Virginia where I was doing this again. And uh, I, went, I was doing a classroom talk, and we were, I was just talking about different things. And a young lady in the front row, was very intimate, they were right, right there, she was sitting right there. She has a notepad open, and she says, I'm a young earth creationist. And, and what about, and then she started talking to me about the moon receding from the earth and how that shows the earth can't be four and a half billion years old. Now, my reaction could have been, you're an idiot. My reaction could have been, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Your religion is ridiculous and has been responsible for killing millions of people. I could have done any of that stuff, all right? Now, don't get me wrong. Creationism, young earth creationism, is baloney. I don't back off from saying that. It is absolutely wrong. If I had said it even that way, I would have alienated this young woman. What I said instead was, ah, you're not realizing that the recession rate of the moon actually changes over time. You can't simply extrapolate it backwards. And if you do, you get the wrong answer. In fact, if you do it more carefully, you see that the Earth can be billions of years old. And she immediately said, well, I read about dinosaur DNA and launching something else. And I said, I'm not a biologist. I don't do squishy science. So <laughs> you're going to need to talk to, I love calling it that. I just, I don't know why I love that. Um, you're going to need to talk to a biologist. And she kept coming up and I said, you know what, look, what you need to do is understand that, she, she told me, she went to the Institute for Creation Research and Answers in Genesis, and I said, look, I've, I've seen these guys. They, they, they do use a lot of outdated astronomy in their astronomy. I'm not qualified to talk about these other topics. And what you need to do is find outside sources. You need to go out and see what other people are saying and see where the evidence takes you. And I said, it's okay for you to believe in what you want to believe. I'm not going to try to change your mind for that. But I think you need to look at the evidence and see where that points before you, you, you make unequivocal statements about, about scientific evidence. And we kept going, and then there were, there were other questions. We talked about aliens in 2012 and all the stuff you'd think. By the end of that class, 
She was laughing. She was having a good time. She came up to me afterwards and thanked me. And we chatted about it for a while. And the teachers came up to me later. And they were so glad that I handled it that way. And it was, it was an experiment on my part. I hadn't really done anything like that before. Not quite like that, at least. And you know what? It's an anecdote. This is one example. But it worked. And I just, just bet it'll work all the time. All the time. Dr. Phil Plate. <laughs>